I'm Kaylin and I'm a volunteer at Earth Place and these are my ferrets. This is Snuff and this is Moo and I'm sure they will be wandering around while I try and film this. Um, so these are domestic ferrets and contrary to what most people might think, they are not rodents, they are mustelids. Um, so instead of being related to things like hamsters or guinea pigs or rats, mice, etc. They're actually related to things like otters and minks and wolverines and martins. So the weasel family is classified by their long bodies, as you can see, and their short little legs and the scent glands that they have behind their little ears and on different areas of their body. Yes, hi. <laughs> so the domestic ferret is a species of mustelid that derives from the European polecat. Thank you for your help. In Connecticut, we have several kinds of wild mustelids. These include the American River Otter, American Mink, Fishers, and the Short and Long-Tailed Weasel. All of which are a lot more common than you would think. Um, it's just that mustelids are by nature really elusive and also very quick and sneaky, and this makes them hard to spot. So if you ever see one in the wild, consider yourself very lucky. Wild mustelids have large territories um, that they patrol daily and they're very territorial and can become very feisty when they're confronted with trouble. So these territories consist of their hunting grounds. For example, mink will have territories that include rivers or marshes, and weasels will have things that include things like rock walls and small spaces that mice might be hiding in. So um, there's only one kind of wild ferret, and that is the black-footed ferret and they are native to uh, Central North America. They live on the plains. Um, they primarily hunt uh, prairie dogs. So they live in that kind of habitat. They used to be more widespread and they were all the way from Canada to Mexico, uh, but unfortunately they are on the endangered species list. And in 1987, they were actually considered extinct in the wild. Uh, but through the efforts of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, <laughs> Moo has my shoe, <laughs> they were bred and they were reintroduced and now there's roughly a thousand uh, in the wild in the United States. And so in the wild, ferrets are a burrowing species, unlike their treetop relatives, the martens. Uh, this means they're excellent diggers, as you can see by his little claws and his agile little paws. Um, so they have really unique flexible spines and they have little ears and these are both adaptations which help them uh, to be good burrowers. Um, it allows them to fit through small, small spaces and to chase things in the small spaces so they can chase rabbits, they can chase mice, they can actually do U-turns in small spaces. Uh, he won't let me bend his body all the way that way but they're very flexible little guys. So, uh, did you know that ferrets actually don't eat things like fruits and vegetables, um, but they're obligate carnivores. So just, <laughs> just like cats, this means that they only eat meat, and this is because they have short digestive tracts despite their long bodies. Um, so it's easy for them to digest meat, but not veggies or uh, fruits or, <laughs> or leaves. You're not helping. We're trying to educate people about you. Do you not care? Okay. So as far as thinking about ferrets as pets, they are considered an exotic animal. Uh, doesn't look very exotic, but it is. Um, and they're actually illegal to own in some places in the world. And that includes New York City, Washington DC, and the entirety of California. This is due to the fear that they can escape and develop a population and become an invasive species. Uh, this is debated, but the rules are the rules. So you've probably heard ferrets are stinky, and you're correct. Let me double check that. Yeah, they're stinky. Um, <laughs> so they have a musky smell that you can't get rid of. A lot of American ferrets are descented uh, when they're born, um, but they still have scent glands behind their ears, which is why I sniffed his head to see if he is smelly. And when they're scared or excited, this scent comes out more, and um, that's what makes them smell. So the ones behind their ears cannot and should not be removed. So they're always gonna have a little bit of a smell to them uh, based on their diets and their cleanliness and how well you take care of them. That obviously affects how strong the smell is. Um, but if a ferret is well taken care of, then they kind of just have a natural smell, the same that a dog would have. It's just a different smell. So a group of ferrets is called a business, but most wild weasels are solitary. 
um, except for when it's breeding season. Uh, this means they prefer to be alone. However, domestic ferrets love company and can actually become depressed if they don't have another ferret to hang out with. And that's why we have two ferrets. We have Snuff and Moo, who is doing what he does. Um, and they are very good friends and they've been raised together and they sleep together and they play together and um, they're very happy because they have each other. Ferrets are very intelligent. It's possible to train them. Uh, they can be taught simple tricks. We have not had success with that yet. They can be taught how to use a litter box and they can be taught no, but chances are they will not listen to scolding. No! Oh, good boy. Chances are they won't listen to scolding and instead they get really excited that they're in trouble. Uh, after all, they're very mischievous animals. Anytime that we scold Snuff and Moo, they just get super excited and they start doing something called the Weasel War Dance, which is when they're so excited that they wiggle their whole bodies back and forth and they go backwards and they jump in the air and they make cute little noises and it's the best thing ever. Despite their love for trouble, uh, ferrets have also been trained to do things such as hunt rabbits and run wires through small spaces, so they can be good. Another mischievous behavior that they have is called stashing. Uh, that is what you will see Moo trying to do when he carries around his toys and Mark shoes and socks and everything that he likes to take. This is because in the wild, uh, ferrets will stash their food in their den so that they always have a little snack for later. Think of it like a fridge that doesn't work. The name ferret in Latin actually comes from a word that means stinky thief, which could not be more accurate. They're very smelly and they love to steal. The average ferret lifespan is about seven years in America. Um, in Europe, where they're a little more well-bred, they're known to live closer to 10 years. Ferrets are also capable of getting a few diseases and illnesses like every other animal. Um, but something interesting and sad about them is that they're actually prone to sicknesses like the flu, um, which puts them at risk, obviously. And something that is unfortunate about that is that they get the flu from not only each other, but also from people. Um, so if you're ever sick, just make sure you're very careful. Don't go around any ferrets. And if you happen to own ferrets, see if you can get someone else to, you know, feed them, make sure you wash your hands, etc. Something a lot of people don't know about ferrets um, <laughs> is that for the most part, they aren't really um, cage animals, as you can see by this wandering little guy. Uh, they need time to roam and play and run. <laughs> Some people even free roam their ferrets the same way you would keep a cat. Uh, we like to give our ferrets up to eight hours a day out of their cage so that they can play and get their energy out. However, they aren't awake for all of it because ferrets sleep anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day. And they are crepuscular which means that uh, they're most active during dawn and dusk because in the wild, this would be the best time for hunting. And most wild members of the weasel family, that is the case for them. They're most active during dawn and dusk. Uh, anytime that I've seen any sort of weasel animal, it has been closer to sunset. I've only seen a fisher in the wild, but um, that's what it was. So domestic ferrets have a variety of coat colors. So our ferret snuff, is a sable, which is closest to the European polecat. Um, if you see a picture of them, they also have little masks and dark colors. And Moo here is a cinnamon ferret. Um, you would not see a weasel like this in the wild. This is a result of breeding. It's how we get this very cute, creamy color. Uh, at Earth Place, there is two cinnamon ferrets, one sable, like snuff, uh, one that seems to be like a blaze. It's similar to a sable, but they have more splotches of white. And we also have a marked white ferret, which is a white ferret that has small markings. Um, so Momo has a little black stripe on her back, tail area. Some other coat patterns include chocolate, um, black eyed white, albino, those are the white ones with the red eyes, <laughs> and badger, which is when they have face markings that look like a wild badger. Uh, domestic ferrets are really fun and they're full of tons of personality and if you have the time and dedication for them, they make great pets. And if you don't have the time and dedication for them, you should go and find a spot to learn about them like Earth Place. And I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned some cool stuff about ferrets. No, you can't do that! You can't! You guys are making a bad impression! The American River Otter, the American Mink, Fishers, 